from Vishnu Subramanian from Java's Lab Study. Recently, I was going through the 19th chapter of Fastlane, where we are shown how to build different components of PyTorch like data set, data loaders, NN module, uh, Fastlane learner, callback, all from scratch using simple Python. And after reading that, uh, I felt it's easy to understand these things. So I was curious to understand if I'll be able to go through PyTorch NN module, actual source code. I did that and it was close to 1000 lines of code, but uh, removing a lot of conditions that PyTorch has to do because it's a large project, there are a few simple things that makes the PyTorch NN module very beautiful. So in this video, we will look at how the NN module, which is the base class for all PyTorch models work and answer some of the questions that I have, most of you have. Example of a simple PyTorch model that subclasses nn model. All this model does is it reinitialize two convolution layers and we have a dummy variable. It's just nothing. I want to show you something if I have it. We have this and then let's create an object of that, our simple model. And let's look at an internal Python object called tick. So whatever we save here, all of those things generally gets stored under it. If we see here, let's observe two things. There are too many things here like buffers, non-existent hooks. Let's forget that they exist for now. Let's, just, let's focus on the modules and name. When we said self.name, it ended up as a key in this dictionary. But the, with, even though we use the same approach, self.con1 is equal to the conclusion layer, it ended up under modules. How did that happen? So let's look at that first and then we will see we always say model dot conclusion one and we have access to that layer model dot con one we have access to it but how does pytorch internally brings us the model because we can see that uh, it's actually stored under modules dictionary so modules itself is a ordered dictionary it has got uh, keys and values and conclusion one is one of the key how it gets that the third thing we see is we don't call model dot forward. So model has a function called forward, but we don't call it that way. Generally, how we call uh, the model function is like this: we pass the input to the model, and we assume that PyTorch somehow passes this input tensor to this forward function that we have implemented. A simple model. How does it do? If you're an advanced uh, Python programmer, oops concepts, then you would have understood it. How. And when I did all these three things, I tried to implement, uh, answer all these questions and create a miniature of nn.module, I realized the tab completion doesn't work. When I say model dot, right, I get the name, but not con one, con two. I want to understand why I don't get it and figure out how to make it happen. So the first thing we will look at is the simple one initialization. It's pretty simple. It's a bunch of different arguments being initialized to order pick mostly and hook is none this is said except initializing a bunch of values nothing much has happened and then we have the set attribute let's look at how pytorch set attribute looks like let's search for this function and if we open this function uh, we can see a lot of things that are happening here if basically uh, pytorch is doing a lot of validations to ensure that we use uh, PyTorch models in the right way and we do not mess it up. But at the end, what it does is it kind of checks if the value that we have passed is a module, and if it's a module, it assigns to the module under of name is equal to value. Whereas model is module is nothing but the self. Uh, it basically takes the order dict from the dictionary. But what about the set attribute? Why are we putting it here? So what happens is whenever we initialize something here or the subclass the simple module if you see here i'm not using the nn dot module we are using our uh, simple module that we have we are going to write so when i say self dot param what happens is python calls internally this function and it checks for it takes basically two arguments name and value it checks for the data type of value we have created a mini minimal version of the set attribute that we can find in pytorch code and if it's of type parameter or module, it puts it in the respective dictionaries. If it's not, 
then we just pass it down to the self. In the case of name in our previous example, uh, here it will be directly passed on to the object. The next question is we had was, how are we able to access the convolution one? Let's do one thing. Let's uh, comment out all these things. Let's assume that we have just implemented uh, set attribute and we have implemented my network. Let's say now let's look at the dictionary object. What do we contain? It contains parameters, and I don't want to see the such a large tensor, so I just removed that. Okay, if you look at the modules, it has convolution one as expected and convolution two. Okay, and then random variable, which is just an integer, it ended up with self. But now let's see if we are able to access the convolution one layer. The tab doesn't work. I'm trying to press the tab and I'll not be able to access it either. It says you no know, attribute convolution one. To make it work, what we have to do is we have to implement the get attribute functionality. So what get attribute does is whenever Python is not able to find a key or an, a variable directly in this dict, right? Here it can find underscore parameters, underscore multiple random. Way. It doesn't find convolution one, CNOV one. So it calls the get attribute, and here we can write our logic, which can help figure it out how if it's there in one of our dictionaries in this example. So when we get the name, whatever name is being passed, that is basically object.con1 or object1.con2, we see if it's there in the modules or we see if it's there in the parameters. If it's available, we pick it up and return. Now let's try to do the same thing and we see it works. And the other thing that we have to figure out is how do we pass the input and get the output. In order to do that, we have to implement something called call. A PyTorch example has got much more complicated, or at least I find it complicated. I'm not sure what is happening. But basically, it's calling this call implementation, and there are a bunch of hooks that we end up calling. Hooks are basically uh, ways to uh, peek into the tensor operations through forward or backward propagation. Uh, basically what it does is, let's assume that we have not passed hooks, mostly which we don't do. It checks if these any of these hooks exist. If it doesn't exist, all it does is forward call. Forward call in general, that is when we don't do any tracing or something, it's just self.forward, which is the function that we have to implement. There is no forward function in this. This class, which the child class, right, has to implement that. So, since this is our own in dot module, so we have to implement this call here. And it says whenever someone calls us like this, as if we are a function, dummy model is a function, then pass it on, pass whatever arguments we get to the self dot forward. So now we will be able to use it as a function like how we generally do with PyTorch model. The only thing that we are lacking right now is when I press tab, I don't get convolution one, which is very important, right? Otherwise, it's tough to use it in a Jupyter notebook or ID. We can't remember all the method names. I got a bit crazy on how that can be done. Okay, then after a couple of googling and searching through, I figured out that Python has got a magic method or dunda, dunda method i'm not sure what these underscore methods are called these are basically internal methods this is where we actually implement that so let's have a minimal version of it again where all we do is this contains all the required or default python classes let's try to understand what, what happens here right let's say dummy model underscore underscore class okay to put it in there. The down free class. Okay. So it has all these Python default ones, and then we have dict keys. Dict keys is where you have all this rand where at all. And we don't get the underscore model or well, the keys underscore models, right? So we take that and put it in some variable and parameter in some variable. And then we return all these keys together. Now with this last piece, we will be able to have our tab completion also working. Now we are able to see conversion one, conversion two, forward. Back. So these are the four things I wanted to show you. And of course, uh, NN module has got so many different methods like name modules. We can see what is what happens in train, what happens in eval, how it's implemented. 
what happens when you say zero grad if you're ever wondering uh, when you say zero grad for removing all the gradients right or making it zero you want to know what happens we can come here and take a look there's so much of code if you want to dig deeper you can take a look at it and there's also a blog that i'll be publishing along with the video you can read it if you enjoy the video please let us know and if you want more videos on certain topics please let us know we'll be happy to make i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for taking time bye bye